welcome to number 30. This is our 30th study group. And um, I do like to show this in case there's anybody that can't hear me. We are recording. And um, this is what I am calling pay what you can learning from ACE Dog Sports. So um, it's only free if you need it to be. And there are more recordings on the YouTube channel. And we're hoping that everybody will follow us. We've got um, some cool Instagram postings up now. We're, uh, I'm much more active on Facebook than I was. So I'm hoping that everybody will follow us, please, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if we're going to survive an online um, <laughs> life. So um, today we're doing the glossary. I, I, uh, I created the glossary for my online classes. Um, and, and it occurs to me that um, the glossary could be done a lot of different ways, but I think for now I'm gonna stick with alphabetical order. I did add on the glossary of cues at the end and um, really all of these words could be broken down into categories, obstacle, um, you know, the four obstacles, the four things that we use in agility, the four, the four places we go to cue our dog are obstacle, directional, um, obstacle, directional, verbal, and physical. Those are the types of cues. So glossaries could be within those things, but I'm, I'm imagining someone watching one of my classrooms online and then hearing me refer to something um, like they, like I know them because <laughs> I have been talking a certain way for a very long time and not knowing what the heck I meant and then just needing this to go to an alphabetical order. The reason I'm super excited to talk about it with you guys is because um, it never ceases to amaze me how we consider you guys, I work with, I've worked with lots of people over lots of years and the common thread that I find that I think is a big challenge is that folks don't really think through what they want, what the cue is for what they want and how to go about teaching it. You are a teacher. <laughs> So you are teaching a subject, uh, a subject material to another species. So you had better know your stuff. If you're going to teach it, even if you were going to, if I'm going to teach it to you, I have to be able to know it well, let alone my poor dog. So, and, and then with any student, you have to understand what the lesson was that the, that the student got. So the other day we had a little incident at our house where a child made a real big mistake and a older person yelled at the child, kind of not new age teaching. And um, there was trauma on level, many levels. And um, uh, the, um, the, the, where we went with it was as a family, what if the lesson was not for the child to not do that thing again? What if that wasn't the message? What if it was don't get caught, <laughs> right? So when we're teaching our dogs, you know, it's just like peeing on the floor. I remember I learned that in early, early on in my career. It's And that's probably the better example given our our form here is that if you really come down super, 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 super hard on, a, on an, any dog for urinating or defecating, you may have said, don't ever do that in front of me. Now you're going to be outside walking for a really long time to get that dog to potty. Because you just said, if I see you doing that, I'm going to lose my grip. So, so now that then they call me and they say, yeah, yeah, I walked him for an hour and he held it the whole time. As soon as I went in the other room, he peed in the floor. I'm like, you're a good dog trainer. 
You're just not a really good teacher at realizing what your pupil learned from you. So the other day, this is so classic. It happens to me so many times a week. You guys, this isn't a once in a blue moon thing. This is just about every single student I work with at one time or another. And we'll be talking and, and there's something happening between the person and their dog. I, I say the word something because it's not teaching and it's not it, it's sort of like a negotiation requesty half-hearted suggestion maybe <laughs> and my line when that's going on is um what is it that you want the dog to do and they student always answers me and the answer is um usually not what the response should be for the cue they just gave. Example, somebody the other day told their, their dog was doing something and I could tell, that, I could tell what they didn't want the dog to do. They didn't want the dog to lean into the leash and eat the grass. And they, they were sort of, they didn't want to be disrespectful to me, which is something you guys, if you're going to be a great dog trainer, you got to learn how to do this. Excuse me. That's it, we could all practice together. Excuse me, while you address your dog. <laughs> Good job, Kristen. <laughs> so, so um, uh, and, and at a dog show, you can just blatantly ignore your person that you're speaking to because they'll go, how cool is she that she's putting her dog before the conversation? And I will always be excited if my student addresses their student in the middle of a, of, of a conversation. So, so I said, what is it that you, so she eventually said sit and the dog sat. And I said, did you want your dog to sit? And she said, yeah, that's why I told it to sit. And I said, did you want it to sit a second ago? And she said, no. And I said, what did you want it to do? And she said, I wanted it to stop eating the grass. And then we had a 15 minute conversation about Talking what about the proper, you what the proper cue for that would be. So, um, the, so the, the moral of the story is if your dog, if you are, here's the key. If you are soliciting a response with a verbal cue, with a physical cue, with a verbal or physical suggestion, if you're patting your leg, um, I'm not sure who MM11 is, but you're going to want to mute because we can hear your, we can hear what's going on. Um, I'm one of those dogs that distracts easily. <laughs> I have so much sympathy for those dogs. So um, if you clap your hands, if you smack your lips, if you give a half hearted command like Fido. Like the ones that have a question mark, hey, 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 bud, hey, bud. Um, you're, you're, you're soliciting a response, but sometimes my students don't know what response they're actually soliciting. Sometimes they're asking the dog, are you in the mood to listen? Like, it, you know, anybody home, could I give you a real cue? And the problem with that is you're teaching the dog to ignore you. You're teaching the dog that he has an option of a response. And then you're also creating these layers of communication that are open to negotiation. So if you have solicited a response, you've tugged on the leash, you've given a, 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 a half-hearted encouragement, I am begging you to understand what it is you want back. Because if it isn't, if completely ignoring you isn't on the table, or if you can see that completely ignoring you is never in your best interest long-term, then you're going to start noticing that you have, you guys, I have real commands and I deliver them in a real way. And I also have invitations but invitations cannot be ignored. My dogs do have to RF, RV, what is it? RSVP. So um, 
they have, they, there's just, and I know how much time they have, and I know what response I want. I also know, and this is, I know what to do if I don't get it. It's not that my dogs are magic and it's not that I'm magic. All I did was the learning that is on the sheets. All I did was learn my own glossary. So um, I want to, so for all of these things, I know exactly what the criteria is. I know if the cue is a verbal or a physical or a combination, I know how it's delivered and I know what the response is from the dog and I know how long the dog has to do to comply and I know exactly what I will do if I get no response, a partial response, a mediocre response, a good response and an outstanding response because I think about it way more than I should probably disclose. <laughs> You guys, you've be on your way to your training sessions and, and Layla, if you come up here, you'll have a whole bunch of time to, to think about it. You guys, on the way to your training sessions, you should be thinking about your dog's weak links and what you're going to do if you don't get what you want. I cannot tell you how many clients I see and I'll daily, daily, this is every day I'll say, okay, we're going to work on this. Do you know what you're going to do if you don't get it? And the number of times I hear no. And I'm wondering, my gosh, if you were teaching whatever it is you are confident in, you guys, honestly, honestly, it's, it is so wound into confidence. And I think if you had, you created your own vocabulary and in, and in the back of my book, I actually have a chart in the two on two off book. If the dog does this, do that. And I, and I envision, you know, those trees that's like, yes, no. And if it's a no, you go here, you know, you reread the instructions or you get out a screwdriver. And if you get your screwdriver out and this happens and that happens, and then you go here, that's how I want your brains to work with your cues. Okay. The dog did it um, perfectly, not so perfectly, you know, all the things. And then where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you go? And then what happens? And then what happens? And then what happens? And the dog either ends up being getting a refresher course. So back to kindergarten goes on the list. Um, I've, those of you that just came in, I'm going to be have to be taking notes because I'm discovering new things. So what I want to do is I want, I'm going to open it up. You guys, these study sessions have turned into lectures more than I've intended them to be. I am confident that the information is good. And um, Pat, you need to mute if you can, thanks. Um, and, um, uh, and all that jazz, but I wanna really encourage you guys to talk. So type for me quickly, after I just encourage you to talk, um, if you got a chance to read the whole thing. I printed it out and it was a lot of pages. So say half, all of it, no, yes, read it, yes. So I've got two, oh, goody. Um, so that's almost, oh, thanks, Becky. <laughs> Y'all 12 pages. You can make nine pages if you change the font. <laughs> I'm glad I got new printer, <clears throat> printer ink. Okay, there, ha anybody, anybody not? get to it. Okay. Not all of it. Yeah, it's, it, it's, um, I think there's easy ways to do it. I hope that some of you made some notes. Um, I, I want you to ask questions. You've, there is no way that anybody could read this and not have questions. <laughs> just, there's just no way. Oh, Margaret, you've told me that before. Thanks. Read it all. Okay, so there. Here's a here's a classic question. I don't understand what you want the dog to do when you what, when you say this, or I don't think I need that because I use this instead. 
or I have two words to mean that, or Margaret, what were we, what you and I, oh, Margaret, you sent me a great question tonight. Let's start there. Oh, and I'm going to put no on the vocabulary list based on your question. So I'm going to, I'm going to say your question, Margaret, and you can tell me, um, cause this is vocabulary. Margaret's question. So Margaret's question was the dog is eating the grass and, um, what's do you tell the dog no or do you tell the dog leave it or off so my definition of no which is going to be added to the glossary means you are making a really serious mistake i don't want a dog no is not communication no means you're, and something is happening now that can never happen. And it will certainly baseline never get you a cookie. And, and if you don't give me your attention pretty quick, it's going to escalate from there. So no means um, uh, you, you can never do that. Getting in the garbage is no. There's never going to be a time it's okay with me for the dog to get into the garbage. So I'm not really going to start with a command. I want the dog to learn not to go into the garbage, but, but, but grabbing at the grass is an opportunity for me to teach a verbal cue or a physical cue to the dog. So a tug on the leash, if I can't give a verbal cue, means to the dog, stop what you're doing. You've missed something. So, so if the dog ignores the tug on the leash, I've got to ask myself, does my dog understand that, what I just said? And if, I, and if I'm going to tug on the leash and the dog stops, I absolutely must verbally and physically reward. I must do that because I am teaching. And when I teach, I grade. So this is another thing I see. The dogs get, the dogs take, a cue is a test. The dog, you give the dog the test, the dog passes or fails. That's back to knowing what to do. So if I want to have a word that means do not touch that with your mouth, my word is leave it. And I want to be able to say that when my dog picks up something horrid on the trail and I don't have a leash on. So I teach that on leash to a high level before I ever try it off leash. But if I've got my leash on, that's a tra perfect training opportunity. So I would have cookies, I would say leave it, and I would reward the dog for leaving it. If the dog ignored the leave it, I would communicate with a tug on the leash. I would not keep using leave it. At some point that would turn into no. Why? Because it switched from, it's turned into ignoring me. And ignoring me is something that I never want in the future. Is there, so you guys, I wrote an article called um, Just Say No. And um, I'll put it, I'll get it out there um, uh, and make it available because no is, my dogs are, you know what my dogs think no means? Recall. They don't look scared. It has to be a, a no. All it means is get get to me. Do I reward it? Yeah, if they come to me. So, and do I have levels of no? You you bet you. You you bet you. So I wouldn't be using no to teach the word leave it. But if I had a dog that was well on his way to using leave it, and my leave it wasn't working, I would go to no. If I go to no too fast or too often. Does my leave it lose its, its um, power? Yes. Can I overuse no? Yes, absolutely. No should be uh, a, a secret weapon. It, it, it can be overused. So Margaret, I hope that answered your question that, that when your dog is doing something with his mouth that you don't want him to do, leave it would be the cue. And you would work on it and train it. And I got an okay from Margaret. I don't understand the difference between no and drop it. Okay, so we just went there. That was you, Margaret. Um, so you guys, come on, hit me. Don't be shy. 
I have a question as far as, as you know, about how exactly to reward the dogs. So I don't, this might be individualized, but like what, when to say which words, and I know we've worked on this together and, um, you know, when to reward the dog with food or a toy, when to, how to, how to change your voice, what words to say. And like I said, that might be different from handler to handler um, when the dog does things right. And I, I guess that's kind of what I've been kind of struggling with as far I as- I sort of like to reward, I, it's a good question. I like to reward the dog at the moment with what he wants the most. So like when it's summertime, my dogs are swimming. I do a lot of training at the gate at the swimming pool because I can use the pool as a reward. The, the, um, and my voice has so many different inflections. And um, the main thing that I do is I'm crystal clear as to whether or not I want my reward to include an interaction with me or not. So if I'm throwing a party, I, this is another thing, you guys, I can solicit the dog physical interaction with me by the way I'm rewarding. Now, clearly, if you're rewarding with a tug toy, you're soliciting tug and it's an activity. If I'm, um, if I'm working, if I'm rewarding the dog verbally for a stationary thing like stay, my, re my system of communication around that reward is rehearsed and understood. And it sounds like, good, that's it, good job. And it is meant to be a bit hypnotic. It's meant to be soothing and calming because I don't wanna go, yay, that's it, look at you, punk. And not because that would be wrong, but because when I do that, I am soliciting movement because I want to be able to do that. So I don't want to be, I don't want my demeanor to be joyous without my dogs understanding that that is an invitation. And my proofing, see, because I'm consistent and I'm looking at all of my communication as a system, um, it, um, uh, it's constantly refined and it's constantly gets stronger. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. I know if I'm trying to excite my dog or not. I know with what I'm teaching, what level of excitement. This is about, it, this is about getting the dog engaged. This is fun stuff because you, where your dog's brain is, um, Pat, you're gonna have to figure out how to mute. Um, you might have to Google it if you're if it's not coming up right away. There Sandy, you, you should be able to to mute her uh, if you're the host. Oh, that's right. I have the power to mute everyone, <laughs> don't I? Um. <laughs> so so um, if I'm trying to teach something like just take a row of jumps, go on tunnel. My, my, um, I, I can be responding to the dog in a very upbeat way. If I need my dog to think like some dogs with some food, they lose their brains. And to use that reinforcement when you're needing the dog to figure out something complex, it, it's not going to work and it's going to be detrimental. If you're, and same thing with toys, you know, certain toys. So yeah, it's unique. You're right. It's unique to the dog and the handler. And your dog will tell you if the excitement level that the way you are behaving and the reinforcer that you have chosen for that particular session is exactly the right one or not. And you should have a lot of fun and you should know that the temperature of the day and how much exercise the dog had and how much he's eaten and how his tummy feels after his car ride will all play into it. And it is part of being a good teacher to meet your students' needs that day. You guys just constantly think about a student, a student that doesn't feel good that day. Sometimes my students come in and say, can you go easy on me today? And I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have to? <laughs> Did that help? 
Okay, guys, questions on the vocabulary list. There had to be things on here that you've never thought about training. You don't understand why the heck it's even on there. Or stuff that maybe you thought meant something else, or if it means something else in your world, do you have too many things that mean that? The release word is something else. Is the release word on here? Several of them, yes. Okay, good. So with, is everybody's clear on the release word? I wrote a 2300 word article on the release word. Mm. <laughs> Send that, I wanna hear that. I'm suggesting that you all don't know everything you need to know about the release word. Um, having your definitions clear, you guys, you must have some things that you're using and your dogs interpret them a little bit differently from time to time. So I have, some of my cues have, um, are more rigid, have stricter criteria than others. For example, come here has very strict criteria. It means whip your head around as fast as your neck muscles can accommodate and move as quickly as you can in the most direct route to me. And anytime I don't get that, I put my teacher cap on and I start teaching. So the, the, other, the other part of that is let's go. I'm on the path in the woods. Let's go. It's delivered the same way. Um, could it be different? Could it be, come on? Yes. Those are what I call, for lack of a better phrase, my casual cues. They still have criteria and they're still reinforced. This is the other thing is I have students that use copious amounts of food for their important commands, but the commands, a classic one is in the early, most of you aren't going to fall into this category, but you know, neighbors and family members that do. The dog says sit, but there's no end. The dog gets up when it wants to. So there is no release word for it. And they say, and then they'll I'll say he just he the dog got up and they'll say, I didn't say stay. It, you can't live there. If it, and, and whether or not to say stay is a big thing too. Well I said sit, I shouldn't need stay. You know what I found? You, you shouldn't, but if you're not going to remember to release the dog, it might help you to remember that the dog is on a stay if you tell them. <laughs> anytime you put your dog on a position, anytime you ask for anything, it should have an end. That's why in my Feet First program, there's a section. In fact, the acronym Ditch Your Dog, um, Q Start and End is the C. When does a Q start and how does the dog know when it's over? So, um, uh, uh, you know, even what the, the other one that drives me crazy in agility is watch me. The handler is doing a lead out and they're just telling the dog to watch them. Well, are you going to release the start line first or the watch me first? And then do you really want them watching as they're jumping? And when were they supposed to stop watching you? And if it's important enough to start, then it should be important enough to end. And if it's not important, then forget using it. And that's why I don't say watch me to my dogs. It, obedience is a whole nother story because watch me means put your eyes on me. Don't take them off. And if you have trouble with that, I'll help. But there is a formal release about the release word. You recently told me the release is more arbitrary than I previously thought. Are you still tripping on that? Sometimes we can release to the next obstacle without saying the magic word. You might want to discuss this. So I, I kind of came, I had to come up with something because I have taught for many, many years that the release, the uh, um, specific release word, I call it the formal release word, delivered in a specific inflection, free, okay, break, um, is the magic word to release all positions. And a few years ago, like 20 <laughs> decades, a few decades ago, Nancy guys and I were at a national event and um, there was a tunnel straight ahead of the dog walk. And there was also a tunnel next to the dog walk. And the, and the dog had to turn from the dog walk into the tunnel to stay on course. 
And um, I had been maintaining that I would never, ever release my dog on any word other than the formal release word ever, because I wanted the strength of that. And I knew if I started to use other words, it would water down. That is a true statement. So we got to that course and uh, Nancy said, you're in trouble now, girlfriend. And I said, no, I'll say break tunnel as if it's one word or break, it was turn, break turn, uh, hook was my word in those days. I'll say break hook and I'll just get them both out and I'll say it so fast. Well, before the K came out of my mouth, my dog was over the thing in front. And I knew Nancy was right. I would have to occasionally release on a, turn, a directional cue. And that's when I realized my official definition of my release word is you may now have whatever you want. The reason my dogs go over jumps when they're on the start line instead of coming to me is because I have brainwashed them in that environment to want the jump more than me. There is so much reinforcement and value built in the jump that it is what they want when I set them in front of it. If I pull up in my car in the driveway at night and the neighbor's cat is in the yard and I open the crate door, I don't say break when the dog is salivating. But I don't need another word that means get out of the crate because I already have a word that means come to me. It's come or here. And then I can say heal into the house or with me. And heal and with me have different different meanings. Um, uh, I got to write a note of that, not on my hand, with me uh, and heal. Heal is stricter, with me is in my general vicinity. So this is what you guys should be thinking about. This is what I was hoping for is that you were going to come here tonight and say, yeah, but I, Sandy, I've got a word that means this. Can it work for that too? Or I'm using two words that mean like leave it and off. Like some people have one word for the dog to drop the ball and another word for the dog to not pick the ball. Well, ball, we don't have to say ball. We could say to kitten. We could say one to drop the kitten and one to not pick the kitten up in the first place. <laughs> so, um, so for me, leave it means it has to do with your mouth. If it's in your mouth, spit it out. If you're about to put it in your mouth, don't. And if you're thinking about putting it in your mouth because you're scoping it from across the way, you can't. So it's thy mouth that is in question because you guys, they're dogs and I can't remember shit. So I just, I like making it simple, simple, simple. I don't want multiple I, if I can make it fit in one, I'm gonna, but then I have to say, what's the exception and when would it break? You go to use it and it's like, oh, how's my dog ever gonna understand that? Um, so I will release on different words, but only after I have strong comprehension on the, on the primary release word. That's a way better word for it. So I have my primary release word that is extremely well-trained and I choose to use it whenever I can. And the only times I would not use it is when something terrible will happen if I do. <laughs> like a bicycle will be chased, a cat will be eaten, or I'll go off course. Um, I use leave it and off. Off is for counter surfing. Leave it is on the ground. I would like it simpler, but those are the words that come out of my mouth. So off for me is pause and leave it for me is, uh, is, um, is mouth. So if my dog is standing on the counter, I'm in a win-win <laughs> because leave it or off will work. They can mean the same thing. And, and the reason for that is, is because you guys, I'm not going to stand around and proof the dog. I don't have the time and it would be horribly difficult to teach the dog the real difference of don't touch. And I think that leave it or off could work for either. Um, it, 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 for, for pause, but in general, when the mouth is involved, leave it's what comes out of my mouth and off. Because when my dogs jump on people, I don't wanna say down 
because down has a very specific meaning. Um, it means collapse, you know, put your chest on the ground. Um, oh Lord, I'm in trouble. I use cues like you in the fur or listen you. And if you want more room in the bed, <laughs> I use ballow. Is it ballow dog? I'm never going to get 12 pages of single space cues. You know what, you guys, I talk to my dogs too. I talk to my dogs too. AU, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And, um, but we, me and the dog, the point is the dog and I know what it all means. And, and casual conversation, I mean, oh my gosh, I am the biggest baby talker this side of the Mississippi. Um, but, uh, but um, so, so some of that stuff is, I think they don't technically fall under cues. Now, if I tell the dog, the boulder also, uh, the, the boulder in the bed clearly disguised as a dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I say move, A, get over, uh, and get over isn't on the, and the vocabulary list, but the tone. And that's why I'm such a big advocate of all of your communications having inflections. Um, what do you use to send a dog forward over a jump or a series of jumps? It depends on how, uh, those would be two very different things. Um, I look at a jump these days as a parlor trick. So imagine, oh, there's that silly thing that's like 101 things to do with a box. Imagine if you had flip the box, jump on the box, push the box with your nose, um, all the things that you could do with a box and you had cues for them. It's sort of like that for my jumps. Um, so we just, oh, Peggy and I had a real fun lesson about the word go. So this is fun right here. Go to a jump. If I'm in decel on takeoff, I'm standing still on the side on the, in front of the jump. Um, sending the dog to the jump, jump, uh, jump would always mean a wrap. Well, I have a wrap cue that that is. Uh, some people say wrap, 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 dig, 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 tuck, tuck, tuck is tuxedos. Um, so um, if I want the dog to go and wrap the stanchion, I say that. If I'm in decel on takeoff, that's the physical cue to wrap. But I wouldn't say go, I would double up. I use my physical cue, decel on takeoff, and my verbal cue, wrap, 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 together. If I want the dog to take the jump in extension. So here's all the ways the dog can take the jump. He can take it and turn left to another obstacle. He can take it and turn tight directly to the refusal line. He can go right directly to an obstacle or he can go tight right directly to a refusal line. He can take the jump in, in extension to end or take end start or take something else on the other side or he can go to the back side. So my jump is like that box. It's like a parlor trick. So if I've got a jump in front of me, I could show you tricks on that jump, left big to something else, left super tight directly to the refusal line, right big to something else, right tight, and then an extension. So I am saying to you that I rarely am saying jump. Usually it's a directional. Now, if I need the dog to do that directional and I'm 20 feet away from the jump, moving or not. Sometimes I'm very far behind running because my dogs are fast and I'm not as fast as I used. Well, I don't know about that. Anyways, I used to be slower than I am. Um, and then I got fast and then I got slow again. Sorry, I digress. So um, I will say go left, 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 because if I say left and we're 20 feet from the jump, I don't want the dog to say, oh, sometimes you want me to travel 20 feet and then turn left. Sometimes you want me to turn travel 10 feet and then go left. And sometimes you want me to go left right now. My, I can't teach that. It's too hard. So I can say, and that's when I develop the information zone. So the information zone is where the dog gets the turn cue but I can tell the dog to go to the information zone. So I may be saying, go on, go on, dig, dig, dig. You guys, it, it, with the 13 pages and the endless explanations, it may sound complicated, 
but it's well thought out. And I have worked very hard to actually do my level best to make it simple. There are programs that have way more verbals than this. And I really can't survive with less than, than what I have. Um, should I try harder to use just one? For which one, Margaret? And if you guys wanna just unmute and talk, you're more than welcome. Oh, you mean leave, you mean um, leave it and off? Yeah, that was for the leave it and off. The leave it in the off. Um, it depends on how much of an issue you have. Like, like if you said, could I use leave it? By God, I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> for a quiz jumping up on people, my leave it's pretty darn good. And I have not spent much time with off. Off was something that we used in the, uh, Becky, do you remember off? That's what Pat taught us when we taught dogs not to jump up. Uh, we taught pet, I taught pet obedience classes for, a, whoa, that was fun. That was fun, fun, fun. I'm not being funny either. I loved it. Um, but we used off for jumping up, for jumping up. So I would say, no, but I'll bet you there's one that you follow through on better, one that means more to you and one that your dog already knows better. Um, but I sure wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, Sandy, I don't, I, I don't yeah. think information zone is on this list. Oh, thanks. A glossary. Thank you. Oh, good one. And you guys, anything you've heard me talk about in the past that you think should be on here. I'll be, I'll be using, I'll be needing help forever. Um, what do you communicate to your dog when an error occurs? For example, he popped out early from a wee pull or miss pull. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the thing. This was the tricks versus street commands. I want that on there. I think that people that train with me should be, should really think that I'm inconsistent about this but I'm not, but I don't get questioned about it as much as I really should. So it depends if I'm training a trick, like shake a paw, which I never train and I don't want you to either. Let's use rollover. Um, when I'm training a trick, I am generally not communicating errors. At, Communicating errors, you guys, is so complicated. Ah, ah, is what I use. Ah, it's an interruption. Ah, and it, it does not make my dog's feelings hurt at all. You know what they think? Figure it out and she's going to feed us. They're inspired. Ah, ah, is inspirational to my dogs. It's just, uh, it, uh, but the thing I never do, oh my gosh, I'm trying not to use the word hate in my vocabulary, but boy, do I dislike this. Oopsie. Uh-oh. Good dog. I love that. If, you're, if you understand dogs and voice inflection, you're not going to try to teach an animal like that. You can't go, you're so bad, honey. That's really, really bad. You're going to be in so much trouble next time unless you really liked what the dog did and you're just being silly. And it's like, and it's the same reason why you would never say, good dog, what are you, good dog, right? I mean, some of us never talk to our dogs like that at all. Um, most of us, if we're really living with our dogs, need to from time to time. So, um, but I'm using it more for street commands and real life obedience. You guys, agility is tricks for treats. Agility is you've made a little mistake. Let me show you how. You can't put the dog on that hook on the hook for that stuff like you can a downstay and a recall and a leave it. Those are life saving things. And I don't. I want all my dogs learning to be joyous. I can't stress it enough. I am joyful when I teach. One of my neighbors came out of the house yesterday and said, I love listening to you teach. You sound like you are having so much fun. 
and the, the, it wasn't about a student. <laughs> I was working a dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I'm saying, what the hell was that? It's, it's with Windows, it's, it's a person. I'm kidding, don't let me scare you. So um, I do, so when they miss a poll, I, I'm, I am so scared to answer you. It depends on the dog and how, where they're at with their training, but I have no problem marking errors. Ah, whoops. It's a, it sounds like that. And that's what I do. If, I, if I've, if I do that with my dog Jigs, um, he gets too, uh, I wouldn't even use the word upset. It takes a little bit of his, of his joy away and he's a little bit soft. So um, you, you need something. Does Jigs melt and get upset and want to kill himself when he hears it? No, but I don't, you know what it is? It's when they're, when I can hold them accountable. So I know when I'm going to use a marker word, the level of understanding that the dog has and um Stopping is also an enormous, an enormously important part of my system of communication. So if my dogs are weaving and I stop and turn direction and invite, you know, call them, they've also, that's also a method of communication. If they miss a contact, I stop and stare at the contact. The cookie machine is broken. So the, I'm the cookie machine. So if I'm running and directing and we're having fun and I freeze, that means all is not well in this world. That's why I can't ignore mistakes. I mean, that's why when my dogs make mistakes in competition, I don't just keep going because keeping going says everything is wonderful and stopping means it doesn't. I hope that be, I hope that answers your question. There are some, and some people, because the communication system of communication isn't solid and rehearsed the dogs do get upset. So I wouldn't want you to start going ah, or uh, 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 to the dog. If it, you know, my dogs can be starting to go out the door and I can say, uh, uh, and they just stop. It does. It's their feelings aren't hurt. They just stop doing it. Oh, okay. You didn't want me to go out the door. Just like if I said, do you mute? Oh, okay. I mean, that's what the response should. Oh, okay, cool. You, you'll like me better when I comply. I hope that helped. Okay, B, okay. Um, but when I'm training tricks, there's very little, I'm just playing around and goofing around. So um, the street commands, I, uh, the recall, the leave it, I'm much more with A, no, you know, can't have it. This isn't, a, a, I had a good analogy once. It was like, it's like the, I know what it is, you guys. You've got a five-year-old, maybe a four-year-old, and you're teaching them to stay in the lines while they're coloring, or you're teaching them not to put a fork in an electrical outlet. I'm gonna be teaching slightly differently. And that's how I am with my dogs. I'm teaching a little bit different based on the seriousness of the lesson. I need my student to know this is super serious stuff. My recall teaching isn't the same as my weave pull teaching. It's 10 to seven, I can't believe it. You guys, there's gotta be more. There's just gotta be more. Maybe some of this talk about like leave it and off and and the, um, the recall. The recall is one where I see a lot of people trying to um, uh, get the dog's attention before they communicate. And that, <laughs> If you got, if you got their attention, <laughs> you're, this is why you have to know what their name means. This is why when people, this, this is a good one. So the dog is on the start line and it's looking around or it's sniffing. Do you say their name? Does their name ever mean come? Do you want their name to mean come? Tomorrow, if you say their name and they come, are you going to be happy or mad? <laughs> this is, I, uh, and you know, if my dog isn't in tune enough, 
on the start line to be doing what I want, I need to teach that thing. If I say his name, he better get to me. I can't mess with that. I can't mess with if you hear your name come. I need it. I want it. I love it. It will serve me well in the future. So that's got to be protected. So I'm not going to mess with it. I, then some people, I tell people that, and then they go out to the start and they go, <clears throat> <laughs> and then what they get, guess what they come back with next, next week, watch me. <laughs> I'm like, well, when is that going to end? I think you have to. And then if, if my dogs are sniffing or they're looking over their shoulder, I'll wait a second. If I don't get them retention, you know what I do? I release them and they had better know their job. I mean, not because they had better know they're in trouble. I don't mean that. I mean, and you know what they do nine times out of 10? Yeah, I was coming. You know, yeah, I know the jump is there. I saw it already. I was smelling the grass and knew the jump was there too. So um, this is the thing when you get yourself into fixes and you need a word. And Margaret, I think that's where we were the other day. It's like, I'm in a fix and I want to use the most effective tool that I have. And that's why I think you all need a glossary because I always know my most effective tool. It doesn't mean there isn't something that could have worked because we are, you know, like leave it and off. And um, uh, we are using, we are living with them. You know, there is like uh, Leah saying, you know, get over and move over and, and I'm not living, uh, but all of those can't be ignored. If I'm, hey bud, you want a cookie? The, I, I, I would be, Hey, I just asked you if you wanted a cookie, pal. None of it can they ignore me. And that's the other thing is I'll see owners putting their attention. What was the, there was another real good one. I'm running out of time. There was a real good one the other day where the owner really didn't care. It was about say hi. I had, there were some dogs. One person was leaving and she had a very young puppy. And the two dogs were just kind of hanging out on the edge of the field. And she walked the puppy from the crate. I think I talked about this already on another week. Forgive me if I did. It's just so fascinating for me. And the and she was she didn't care if the puppy stuck with her or went to see the other dogs. And this is the other side of this stuff, you guys, because she should care. The puppy should either be told to stick with her or to go say hi. Now that was one also we talked about because there's very few commands that I, I, I'm hammering this in. I've solicited a response uh, because they're dogs and because we're people. I looked hard for the ones where there are exceptions and that was one, go say hi. We came up with that in the puppies the other day. So go say hi is something for my dogs that is truly optional. They have permission to do it if they want for two really good reasons. If I've got a puppy that is just now deciding I'd rather be with you, mama, I'm paying it. It's too rich. It means too much. I want it. I'm keeping it. I'm paying it. The other thing is, is I don't, I speak dog better than lots of people, but I don't speak it as well as another dog. And if I've told my dogs to go say hi, and um, I've missed a signal that that dog, I told my dog, and my dog is going, uh, I don't want a mama. I, my friend used to say, maybe the dogs are saying, hey, your mother eats shit and barks at the moon. <laughs> So if my, that other dog is saying something to my dog that's saying that my dog is like, mm, I don't really want to go say hi over there, mama. Do I have to? No, baby, you don't have to. So that is one command. Do you guys have any other option things that you, that you tell your dog that are optional? Are, is, is the attention that you see, like if you're at the beach and they're really having a good time and you sort of just want to see how much attention you have, do you ever say, hey, you paying attention to me? And care if you get a response because you were sort of just seeing how in tune he is or not. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Do you do that? You're afraid to answer, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> B 
view you? <laughs> Do you ever give commands that are beside? So I just I just admitted I just admitted it that my um, that my optional, what commands do you have that are optional or suggestions? My say hi is optional. It's optional, okay. Well, say first, hi. my dog, she... Huh? <laughs> with my dog, it's, even if it's optional, she's... So, so that's a good one. What if you have a dog that is um, like um, Kristen and I have that is overly solicitous. Would you still, would you ever want to say hi? You need to even more. You guys, I don't, if my dog runs up to another dog and I was on the phone, like that never happens, ha ha ha, um, and I missed it, they still hear say hi. I act like it was my idea. The deal went way down, but it, it, it's the least I can do. It's all I can do. Um, get a drink is optional. I, I like that. I, I don't act like it is sometimes. <laughs> Do you ever stand over the bone and go, get a drink, get a drink, get a drink. No, get a drink, get a drink. And my dogs will go, good enough for you? Are you happy, dear? <laughs> go potty. How about? <laughs> I think go potty is mother nature makes it, it optional. But guide dogs for the blind would say it's not. Guide Dogs for the Blind has that shit dialed in. No pun intended. Really? They have to potty? Oh, 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 oh you betcha. Those blind folks aren't going out. There, some of those blind folks are not dog people. And, you know, they're not going out four more times. The dogs go when they're told. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, I read somewhere, um, I think it was Susan Garrett. And sometimes when I quote people, I worry that, oh, I read that 20 years ago and maybe they don't do that anymore because there's plenty of stuff I don't do anymore. Lots and lots and lots. But she said the first six months of her puppy's lives, they never urinate or defecate off leash because it's that important to her when she's at dog shows and you go out at night. <laughs> Boy, and have I been there? You're on the third floor and your other dog that's up there barks and you got to take it too. That stuff gets old. <laughs> you need those dogs to go. I like that. Get a drink. Anything else optional? I got lots of students who their recalls appear to be optional. You, you guys, the, the point is um, that you know what to do when your dog is ignoring you. You know to go back to kindergarten. Um, I'm really recommending when your dog is ignoring you that you don't do anything that's wonderful. You don't throw a party. When I interrupt a dog, it is not in a happy or a mean way. It is the same way I would interrupt someone. I used to say walking towards a cliff in a windstorm, but it's the way I would interrupt somebody that was about to step in dog shit. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a, it, I'm not going to, Hey, what are you doing? And I'm not going to go, yeah, hey, I think you're going to, you might step in poop, you know, I'm gonna say, Hey, so uh, that's how I, and when they look at me, like my dogs, which they don't, but I get to witness it more frequently than I want to as I'm a teacher, you know, and they go, then I can throw a party. Yeah. You, you punkin. Yeah. I did mean you, but when I'm interrupting it's whoa, whoa. And that's for anything. If they're up on the counter, I walk in the room and I go, hey, and, and hey is, 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 you know, not off or leave it. So yeah, that can come out of my mouth, but the dogs know they better do something. Would it have been better to say leave it or off when I walked in? Yeah, it would have, if I'm trying to enhance my, um... <laughs> so here's one for you. You walk in, the dog's on the counter, you yell, hey, the dog does it, you decide to do a little training, which is what he gets, you know, they, they all jump, right? I'm always worried when the little ones get all four on and I'm afraid when I yell, they're gonna break a leg coming off. Um, so if you, um, and then you work on 
you're going to put the hot dog there and put them on a leash and teach them, you know, you want this? No, off, leave it off or whatever your word is. Would you then go, hey, hey, was what you just used? No, I would work on my word. We're not perfect. You wouldn't stand there and go, hey, you got your point across. That's the other thing, you guys, you know, the, at the end of the day, did you get your point across? That's a great thing about uh-uh. When you say uh-uh to the dog or ah, is kind of how it comes out of my mouth, how your dog's expression is will tell you if you made your point. My point is you've made a little mistake. Let me show you how. If I yell no, if my dogs are about to take something off somebody's plate and I yell no, I want them to go, did I, how, whoa, was that a serious inflection? You know, um, not inflection. <laughs> infraction was that you know yeah it was a serious inflection about your serious infraction um so i and if i'm not getting that i've got a that's just right back to knowing what you want i don't want a dog to be afraid of uh uh and i don't want whoopsie whoopsie to sound like good dog because i want good dog to um to just mean good dog. And I want happy sounds to mean right track and um, staccato, not happy sounds um, to mean wrong track. It's seven o'clock. This should keep you awake at night. This stuff, I'm telling you, you got to think a lot about your training. You want to be a good trainer. You got to think a lot, especially when you didn't get what you wanted. How the heck did I get that? teaching Quizzleberry, we pull two by twos and he went around two like this, like 20 times before I even could do. I'm like, oh, Nora, how did that happen? Well, guess what? Those two we poles are just about the size of a wing, a jump wing. You know how many times I have that dog go around, do lefts and rights around wings? He's like, oh, two sticks to go around. Cool. Got it, mom. Rock on. You know, so just I had to stop for a minute, though, and go, how did I get here? Even with the back chaining through the two poles. So hang in there, have fun, email me your questions. And um, we're not going to meet on the 23rd, guys. It's my mom's 84th birthday. So um, uh, we're not going to meet on the 23rd, but we'll meet on the 16th and the 30th. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Christine. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you, thank you.